again. That's right. It's the newest version of The Honest Hour. So I'm Keith Alba. I'm Roxanne Webster. I'm yes. the no spin one. <laughs> and we are the owners and partners at my home team. Um, just wanted to come briefly and quickly to you today, kind of give you a quick market update. We haven't done one of these in a little while, so what are we seeing out there in the streets, Rex? Well, the big news, and I hate to be the person who said I told you so of all things economic, but the sky didn't fall. We're not in a global recession because we managed to, again, get through the debt ceiling negotiation. Yeah. Presented with no comment on that, right? Presented with no comment <laughs> one other way or another. Not, yeah. Right. But it shows us, too, I think that we saw a little bit of hesitancy, not a lot in the past couple of weeks. Buyers just saying, maybe I should wait and see if the sky does fall. Right. So we saw a little bit of easing of buyer traffic. That we typically usually see a slowdown over yeah. holiday weekends. Right. Mm -hmm. So we just had Memorial Day. Thank you, veterans that gave everything. Thank you. Um, but yeah, so that's understandable was a little bit of slowdown, but I do agree. I think there was a little bit of let's sit on the sidelines and kind of see what happens with our federal government and are they able to put something together. But the story continues to be the same old story, which we've been talking about for a long period of time, and it's lack of inventory. Lack of inventory. Lack of inventory. You're going to hear us talking about it until something breaks loose, right? The homeowners, in our opinion, are sitting in their houses because they're locked in on an interest rate, right? That's right. They're looking at it and saying, hey, I got a 30-year, three and a half percent fixed interest rate. And while I may need a bigger house or it may be nice to get into a smaller house, the pain of moving up to a seven and a half percent interest rate or whatever they're at at that time is greater than the pain of them staying in their current property. Right. So people just aren't selling and they're staying there. Last I looked, which was uh, at the end of last week, there was like 1.1 month supply of inventory that's, that's out right. there. And it just keeps getting exacerbated, right? We've got sellers who say, I would sell my house because I need a bigger house. We're having a kid, whatever the story is that, that's causing them to want to move. But they're deciding to keep that other house as a rental property. And we're starting to see that wear thin with some folks who started doing it a year ago because it isn't just keep it and it's an ATM machine. Um, uh, we've got a term we call the terrible tease, right? The tenants, the toilets, the taxes, the keep going, right? And um, so so sometimes we're finding people who are making that decision because they think it's a good financial decision, but they haven't actually worked through the numbers to say, I bought this house as a primary residence. Does it work as an investment or am I an accidental investor? And we would be really happy to have that conversation with you, have, help you determine whether or not it makes sense to keep it or sell it. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a financial investment, that's there, right? And so now rather than a home and shelter, you need to look at it through the lens of an asset. And is it going to be a performing asset? Is it something that's going to actually help build your wealth? Or is it going to be more of a pain, um, put you in a difficult situation where you're supplementing somebody's rent, uh, which is never a good thing. But yeah, definitely something to consider and look at. Every house is going to be a little bit different depending on the mortgages, the payments, all that sort of stuff, what the market rents are going to command for that house in that area. Uh, a lot of different variables to, to think about when you get in a position like that. I think I see a lot of folks being feeling kind of whipped around by the last few years we've had. Right? <laughs> Quite the roller coaster just coming. Hang on, right? And um and feeling out of control, especially with their financial and their real estate decisions and performance. And um, there are things that can be done with experienced agents. Right. Um, to, to still achieve your goals. The most important thing is to find out what you need to do and then have a conversation with a professional to determine is this possible right now and work the Rubik's Cube. Right. One thing that we're really seeing in the market is. I have to tell you, in all honesty, I have not done more cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs negotiations mm -hmm. than I have the past three months. And what I'm coming to the conclusion of with my 25 years of real estate experience is that the majority of people who are selling houses right now have never had to negotiate, have never had to solve a problem because they were in an environment where if the seller said, give me your firstborn child, Rumpelstiltskin, mm -hmm. they do the Rumpelstiltskin negotiation. And that was the end of the story. Because yeah, they, they, they had all the leverage. They had all of the, you know, the power in the negotiations. They were able to command things like that. And now it's shifted some. Now that you actually have to solve problems, right? Like we had a hailstorm a couple of weeks ago, yeah, right? Um, destroyed the roof of a house that the buyer is getting ready to close on. Guess what? We have to solve that problem. And that, that takes skill. And, skill that. <laughs> and, 
like Garaz was saying, not everybody's been through a market about it. They've gotten licensed in the last few years. They may have only experienced the, you're going to take it as I tell you, you're going to take it by her. And, An order right. taker. Right. Yeah. So yeah. as always, we're here to help. If you've got questions, you need assistance. And if you're watching from out of state, we've got a large network of uh, top agents from across the country. We haven't connected to somebody out of state. If you're in Colorado, give us a call. We're happy to give you some information. Thank you. See you next time.